Ladies and gentlemen, because of aviation rules and regulations, we are required by law to point out the emergency exits. There are two exits at the front of this aircraft, two doors at the rear, and an exit over each wing. If in doubt, just follow the crew. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the programme. Tonight, we're talking about flying. That oh, was quite good. Worked better than uh, it did before. Now, flying. Are you frightened of flying? Have you got any views on flying? Do you use the aeroplane very often? If you do, the number to ring coming up on your screen, as usual, is 0532 46 1000. And a little later on in the programme tonight, we will actually have a tribute to Richard Madeley. But first, flying. And uh, some months ago... Jim Bowen, who, uh, of course, is a pal of mine, uh, came on the programme, a programme on phobias, and we talked about the fear of flying. Jim is very frightened of flying. Well, watch this. I mean, if I may say so, you're looking just a little stiff. Just relax. I'm just not relax. happy about this. No, no we're, gonna have a nice, see we're gonna have a nice meal on here. We're gonna enjoy ourselves. No, I don't want it. Let's have, I mean, we can see that, look at this. Do you want to have I'm a little look at, at it? You see? Of it? You see? Look at that. Okay, Jim. The baggage. Yeah, no, we're going in oh, here. Oh, God, it's going small, in. is that? We're going in this way. Yeah. Oh, see, it's all, it's, oh, dear. You come and sit, you sit in here, Jim. Just, just get yourself in here. Handy for oh, the loo. Oh, my God. Oh, dear me. Oh. Which, which side do you, you oh. go over here, Jim. No, 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 Jim, you, you sit over, over this side, over there. All right? It's, there we're we are. there's nobody going to, Set off with it yet, is there? No, 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 no. What are you doing? No, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I just, I was just going to put my coat oh, up there ready. Oh, right. <laughs> Do you want to take your coat off? No. You sure? No, I'm not to take it's anything it's, off. It's, it's dead simple. I know it's simple. Dead simple. It's, it's horrendous. There we are. <clears throat> it is absolutely horrendous, is this. Hands have gone now. I am Should now becoming quite irrational, really. If, if we could close the door. So no, don't, don't any... close the door. Don't close the door. I'm not close it. I'm, I, I, I've never flying. I, I am more convinced now that I will yeah. never fly unless I have. It, it's, it means saving for this is life or something. <clears throat> now that is absolute rubbish because of course. You... <laughs> oh, no. I'd forgotten. Well, You've I'd forgotten, forgotten how frightened yeah. I was of that. Yeah. Now you hadn't had a drink, had you? No, no. Because a lot of people say you look as if you were a little. Um, no, I, I really hadn't had a drink. No. In fact, it was a cold morning, wasn't it? Mm. It really was a cold morning when we did that. Now, the that thing, was terrifying, wasn't it? The thing is, though, that, listen, I have to take, uh, take umbrage with you, really, because you, you got a part in a film. Yeah. You, uh, what was it? I've, uh, El Cid. El Cid. Yeah, I went out to do El Cid. And you flew over there. Yeah. You kept telling them you were frightened. The money kept getting more and more. Well, it, it, I've got to say, it, 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 it was an anaesthetic. It yeah. did help, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I suddenly got to the state where I, I realised I was missing so much that... And the family were. I thought, I've really got to bite the bullet and do yeah. this. And British Airways were superb and said, look, come on, try it. I did it. It still was, yeah. I found it a nightmare. That should be free travel for a while too, shouldn't it? Well, yeah, yeah. I didn't mean to plug it. But no, no, of course not. Well, well listen, be <laughs> before we go any further, how are you feeling now after flying? Well, don't, 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 don't tell us. Let's watch this. Just have a look at this. This is the up-to-date film. to town. We're often asked what the success rate is at the course and uh, I'm immediately, uh, I immediately say to you the success is you being here in the first place and that is the congratulations I give you. I promise you for every one of you here today there are ten outside who won't come near the course at all let alone go to an airport or, or near an aeroplane. So that, and I know it's very stressful early on uh, for you, this is probably the worst you feel. I've been saying that to one or two people already today. It is the most stressful time for you, I promise. From now on, you'll start going downhill on the, on the stress level. <laughs> 
anxiety rating, <laughs> and uh, you would be feeling a lot better. By middle of the day, when we break for lunch, you'll be feeling a lot better, and uh, we'll be talking to you, there'll be more smiles, and already I noticed just talking to you and uh, the groups that, you're, you're, that you automatically got into, that you were feeling, feeling better. There's two bits, as you know, in this course. Mm. There's the bit that's given by the pilots, and they tell everybody what flying's all about. But I think what most people are concentrating on and what most people want are some hints to handle the fear that they've got. There's a difference. There's a situation, and then there's the feelings. The situation, they can do very little about. They're in the plane, and there's not very much that's negotiable. What they can do something about is their feelings. So really what they're asking me to do is to see if some help can be given, some techniques, some strategies can be given to help them deal with their feelings while yeah. they're flying. How's it going? Um, not too bad. Are you sure? No. <laughs> Why are you frightened? Why? Yeah. Um, I don't really know. No? No, I just don't like it. How do your nerves manifest themselves? Just terrified. Really? I just don't like it. It's from about two hours before I get to the plane, I actually sweat and my shirt is soaking by the time I get to the other end. Always. That bad? Yes. I'll I've talk got to, to beat it. <laughs> Ruby Wax. She's, she's doing her other job as an air stewardess because TV work hasn't been so good for her lately, all right? Free coffee. <laughs> okay. oh. Sorry, Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's going very well. We've had one lecture from an extremely talented man, Douglas Ward, who put it all in perspective. I'm going home now, on the bus. I think I'm, I am frightened of uh, the fact of the plane crashing. Really? And also... I told you don't um, feel it. Well, that's, that's it, but I mean, it's just the thought of dying, I think. And the aim of all this is not to have you so that you never have a panic attack or you never feel bad again. It's to teach you how to handle it when it happens. And when you know how to handle it, it stops happening. Yes, well, they seem to be quite happy in there at the moment. The psychologist is taking them through a few of the points. And um, it's not going to be too long now. They've been in there four hours. Another half hour or so, and we'll be walking out to that plane. But how many will make it? Going on television, yeah. a lot of people say, is one of the most nerve-wracking things that you can do. Yeah. Do you get panic-stricken before you do that? You, get, you worry a bit because you, you know as a presenter yourself, you're no good to your producer if you don't worry a bit. Yeah. You, you're nervous, but there's a difference between being nervous and being like, I feel now, which is uh, extremely, mm. extremely distressed. You know before you go out and you do it, you know the bit when you're waiting in the dressing room yeah. or you're walking along the corridor near near the studio? No one this is, is more distressed as this? Miles more. I would get off now. If you if we Bye. stop now, yeah, you would, would get, get off. Yeah, no, you would. I would. And we have beach clear for takeoff, so now, are you ready? for takeoff now. Tell me your feelings now. Now right, this is. This and is now, because we're just about to go right now. Pressure's going okay. up, more pressure's going up, and it's normal then. 
it says it's the power is stable, which it is, and then we slowly feed the power on this up to our maximum yeah. power. Actually, we're not using maximum power yeah, here, yeah. we don't need to, um, because we've got so much runway in here. Yeah, it's so bit light, of, um, power has been set. Can't get off now. The pressure That's all we're, we're, uh, we're committed. We're committed now. We're committed now. So so a bit of vibration uh, there as we go over the central line line, and the captain very gently bringing the control collar. Okay. And there we are. Okay. We're airborne. Are open the How are you when you're flying with your work and you're just on an ordinary flight, nobody to talk to like this? How do you feel? It depends how bumpy the flight is. All the time it's bumpy, it's sheer terror. Yeah. The smoother the flight, the better I am. How are you feeling now? Uh, not too bad. Getting better. Nice view though, the sun's come out. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, you keep looking at it. <laughs> you don't look out the window. Not like I can help it. Well, I'm still shocking with sweat, but uh, not as bad as usual. Yeah. I wouldn't go so far to say I'm enjoying it. Yeah. I'm worrying about the landing now. Yeah. You know, you always think of something else you've got to worry about. Takeoff and landing is horrible. Yeah. And, and but I say every so often you just get this. Well, you've a panic come over and it's one of those things, I suppose. The most stressful part for them pr primarily was getting on the aircraft. And this bit of it really is a, um, a reward. For Did everybody get on the aircraft they today? Lost, no, three people didn't get on. And they were all claustrophobic. It's, uh, that's the main problem we have with people who are claustrophobic because they feel so enclosed. Um, one of them had never been in a lift in his life. Uh, so really... How close did they get? Uh, one was on the aeroplane. One was at the, uh, had got off, one was at the holding lounge and got off, and one was just boarding the bus at the hotel. We didn't go, we couldn't persuade Couldn't them. get on. No. Okay, now just control yourself for a bit. You're Sorry. a lot better than you were. I'm better than. Oh, don't yeah. start no, now, I'm, you're I'm enjoying just a yourself. Just noise again, but I'm better, yeah. Now, this is your certificate, yes. right? This is yours. Yes. You can keep this. Yes. You can take this away with you. I don't need to gamble it. All right, you don't need to gamble this. You can put this in and, and, and look, and well done. All right? Thank you very much. Well indeed. done. I want to see you flying I'll tell you again. What, let me tell you something. For all you like guys watching okay. in Wales, a lot of people on this airplane, a lot of back on here, right? I'm telling you. Really fought. They've all done well as well. Okay. Can we ask him for a wave? Give, him, give, him, give him a wave. Zip. <laughs> Jim, recently, Jim, this is uh, your certificate. Yeah. You, uh, you gave it back to us, knowing that Yorkshire Television would foot the bill frame it. to uh, frame, to frame it. it. So that's yours. <laughs> As I said, you can yeah. put that away. You needn't gamble that, and you can yeah. uh, stick it behind you. But uh, <laughs> yeah. if you want to go for the next one, yeah. I was, I was pretty terrible to you. I have to. I, I was, I was taking the mic out of you while we were sitting there. I'm saying, look out of the window. Look at that. Yeah. The, the floor's yeah. going past no, quickly. No, and sure, but... because for somebody who isn't frightened of, uh, of a particular thing, and the flying doesn't bother me at all. Yeah. Uh, it's difficult to understand why. And when, when, it, when you talk to people, you say, why are you, why are you frightened? Can't you can't it, explain can you? it. Can you? I'm better now. Yeah. Uh, and the, and the course did help. You know, because they just don't drop out of the air. But uh, I'm, I was still had problems on that takeoff bit. I mean, that. Do you remember all that? You were looking at it. Oh intensely. yeah, I remember yeah. it with with yeah detail. It, it was a bit cruel. The cameraman was. He really went in, didn't he? Mm. I didn't realise I looked. They enjoyed that, that here. They, you enjoyed that, didn't yes, you? They're, yes, they're all yes. It's funny. You know, people like to see sweat. There were people <laughs> on there. In fairness, who, I, I thought I was bad, but there, there was there were people on there with a lot more bottle than me who actually fought it. One guy mm. was actually crying on there. One who spoke. Yep. Halfway through it, I managed to walk down the aircraft and, and the guy was in tears. He really thought his end had come. I thought at the end you were really quite happy. You were yeah, enjoying was, it. You were fine. chatting to everybody. Better. You were cracking jokes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting know. all of it. I'm getting on top of it. Have you, have you flown since then or not? No. no when, <laughs> when, when are you going to fly next? Uh, I'd like to go out and see Sue in Japan if I can. I'm going to uh -huh. try and do that in the new year. Yeah. Yeah, because we've missed so much through not being able to. The thing about flying is, for, for people who, who, who don't perhaps fly very often, is you're, you're flying and then suddenly the aircraft sort of drops down when it hits yeah. a, a pocket of, of, it's of air or something. the best laxative in the world. Yeah. <laughs> you closed the window. We didn't see on that, but he closed it, the window. Yes, he wouldn't just, look outside. No, not, now that is stupid, isn't it? 
as, as if that's going to do a lot of good. Mm. Close the window and you're safe. You can't get more thick than that, can you? Uh -huh. You know? Ladies and gentlemen, this is your chief steward speaking. Please note the captain would like to apologise for the bumpy flight. Oh, this is due okay. not to air turbulence, but to the rugby team in the rear toilets trying to join the Mile High Club. <laughs> <laughs> you can't drive. That's why people get frightened. That's why people get frightened. In fact, we have an ex-stewardess coming on a little later on in yeah, the programme. Yeah. And uh, she's actually going to be telling us about some of the things people get up to when they're flying. Really? Yes. Yeah. C could I put my name down for well, that? Well, yes, I'll put your name down straight away. Could I have it down in ink? In ink? Please. Instead of crayon in the normal yeah, way? Yes, I'd like yes. it in ink. <laughs> yes, so it's indelible. Yes. It was a good, well done film. The film was excellent. I've got to congratulate the guys who did the... Mm. OK. Because it was good. We're going to talk some more a little later on. If you want to ask Jim a question, if you have a, a view on Fear of Flying, give us a call. 0532 46 1000 is the number. We're back in a couple of moments. Okay, fine. All right. He'll, Jim will be back later on. Okay? <laughs> He'll be back later on. Welcome back. Sean Hudson, uh, one of uh, the friends of this programme, I like to think. Sean here, who uh, last, uh, last time was on the programme, Sean sang with Noddy Holder. Uh, well, after a fashion, after yeah. After a fashion. Well, I sang behind Noddy Holder. Well, just really. behind and to the left, wasn't it? Yeah, slightly, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then Wayne... Wayne, Wayne, um, Wayne Hussey. Wayne Hussey yeah. was just over there. Yeah. And, uh, yes, you were... That, yeah. was, that was after you maybe do some aerobics with a very large woman. <laughs> like a very, very large woman. I'm glad you reminded me of that because we haven't done aerobics on the show. We must do that again. I'm really pleased yeah. I brought that up. Yeah. yeah. You, of course, you're sure you're not here next week on the show. We've got the Dream Girls and Men from a Dozen. I was most cut, cut up yeah. about that. I thought every, every, yeah. you know, the week he has to ask me back and the Dream Girls are on next week. Well, uh, one of the reasons I invited you back was because every time we've done the programme from a different location, yeah. we brought you back. Now, yeah. this is, this is, can we have a look at this? This is the aircraft hangar. This is an old, an old garage, as you can see, and we sort of sit in the middle of it and uh, there's a lot of space. You don't it's knock very your nice. head. Yeah. It's very nice. It's like doing an interview in like 17, isn't it, with this? Yeah. It's got yeah. You quite, could open the doors over here. You could roll in an elephant if you wanted. I don't think you do, but you could, you know. <laughs> uh, I should explain, because people are over here wondering, you often see Sean. You, you may well have heard of Sean. If, uh, uh, Sean is one of Britain's best-selling authors. Yeah, I, mean, you yeah, know, I wasn't going to argue no, with you. Yeah. Believe it or not, he's, he's one of the wealthiest men in the, in the country. No, I will, argue with, I will argue with you there. He, he sells books. I mean, it's a difficult thing to sell books. They don't, it's they, very, you it's know, very difficult, yeah. Straight into the top ten every time you bring a book out. Yes, yes. He did books that were slugs, was he also that slug? Yeah, slugs was the first slugs. one, yeah. yeah. Some, people might, some people may have seen the film. And we use the word film very loosely there. Yes, it was a loose film. It was pretty, it made me feel pretty loose after yeah. I'd seen it. Yeah. I, like, yeah. I mean, for, for instance, you're not here to plug the new book. Yeah. Because we haven't got a copy of it here, but I mean... No, but, we, we... No, but I will still give a merciless plug, even though we haven't got one. It, yeah. would, it would be called Captives, were it lying there, which it should Captives. be. Captives. Captives yeah. is a new hardback, yeah. It's a story of... Um, well, captives basically, James, which makes me feel very much at home in yes, all this mesh. Yes, yes, yes. It's, but it's a, it's a thriller. It's a, it's a I've got to do this for you, have I? It's a story of the London yeah. underworld. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a story of the London underworld, and it's also an attempt to uh, rid us of prison overcrowding, basically by killing them. Well, no, 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 no it's much more okay, subtle fine. than that. Sorry too. about that. If you're no, watching, no, no, you, don't give the end away. No, yeah. you, you. <laughs> This, this scientist implants a device inside people's brains which he hopes will neutralise their violent tendencies. But of course, with it being one of my books, it works the other way to get massive brain tumours, go out and kill people by the handful. Because tastelessness is not something that you go for in the book, is it, really? Tasteless, tastelessness, yes, yes. In, a, in a big way. Oh, you, yeah, this is I, tasteless, this book, is it? Oh, it's tasteless in a really? big way. Oh, God, yeah. Because I thought yeah. Slugs was a very, very delicate sort of study of those rather slimy little it creatures. Did, it, did have, it did have very strong Freudian undertones, actually. Yeah, yeah and a very strong Freudian undertaste, actually. It this comes out of your mind, doesn't it? All this sort of, it regurgitates out of this. All that starts yeah. in here somewhere. Yeah, it starts in my mind and it comes out to read a stomach. Yeah. Yes. So it actually and, it works its way down, isn't it? Because some of the things, actually, if you've not read a Sean book before, you have to, I mean, they are, they are books not for the weak... Uh, weak-minded, sort of, I thought yeah, you were Yeah, no, so, yeah. no, no, I mean, 
I mean, for instance, Sean identifies and writes about everybody's fears, which is why he's mm. on the present little time with the programme tonight. Yeah, right, right. He likes to write about bereavement, rape, castration. <laughs> well, I don't actually I like damage. to write about it, James, but it's a living. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> eye damage is a big one, isn't it? Yeah, Gouging it is, yeah. out of the eyes is yeah. very, very big as far as you're well, concerned. Well, I've had, a fear, I've had a fear of going blind ever since I was a kid, and if you yes. can see how thick these glasses were, you know why. Uh -huh. But uh, You're that, halfway there at the I'm moment, I suppose. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah, said that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fire and slippery creatures like slugs and yeah. snails, and these you, you've got a, a phobia about these as well. I've got a phobia about nearly everything, actually, yeah, including well, flying, strangely enough. You don't, what are you? I'm absolutely terrified of flying, seriously. Why? Well, because I don't want to die for the same reason that woman on the on the plane, on the yeah. plane, on the plane. But so. you write, I mean, you write about the most gross This is oh, your chief sorry. steward speaking. The duty free trolley will be along shortly to pick ah. all the arms. You may pay for goods in sterling by major credit cards or using foreign currency at our extremely unfavourable rates of exchange. <laughs> Unfortunately, owing to lack of space, the items you particularly wanted will not be carried on this flight. Oh, damn, there's always a way. I mean, I wanted some of that perfume and I never have it. <laughs> Now, Sean, of course, as you can probably tell, he's a heavy metal writer, and uh, Sean is, uh, his, if he hadn't been a writer, he would have wanted to be uh, a rock and roll singer. I would indeed. Well, yeah. not a singer, a drummer. A drummer. I, d I do drum in my yeah. spare time. A lot of people have said that my writing style is very yeah. akin to the way I play the drum. Okay, well, as you know, we like to bring really new, uh, yeah. innovative music on the programme. You've enjoyed some of the music we've I have indeed, yeah. We have chosen this next video for you because we think it's actually, uh, it, it sums up your taste in music. Oh, um, God, is it that bad? No, uh, it's brilliant. It's going to be a huge success this Christmas. Just watch this over here. Oh. There we are, Jingle Bell Rock from uh, <laughs> Barry Manilow. Not the sort of thing you normally see on the show, but Sean begged me. He begged me to play it. You can always phone the call box, you know, the 0898 uh, 46 1000 number. Tell me if you thought that was good. You want to hear more of it. Jan Lewis, welcome to the program. Thank you. Jan is uh, a very brave lady. I'll tell you why Jan is a brave lady. Jan is a brave lady because not very many people uh, connected with uh, airlines wanted to come on and talk to me about it. But uh, you're not um, what I, a hostess or a stewardess or a flight attendant or... I tend to call them stewardesses in Britain. Yes. You don't, it's, not, it's not derogatory in any way or... No. Right. You were for 22 years, mm -hmm. flying for a major airline, mm -hmm. all over the place. Yes. Did it have, I want to ask you, does it have any effect on you? I mean, they say that it sort of ages you prematurely. I mean, it doesn't look like it does, but I mean, do you just suddenly find bits <laughs> falling off or drying up? Or, it's not uh, good for your skin. Yeah. And in fact, it's very bad for, for your, all, your body all told. Uh -huh. But if you sleep lots and eat well. You slept a lot. I slept a lot. I yeah. still do. You do? Mm. Now. When people join airlines, they're not really allowed to talk about it, are they? You sign, you, you, you sign little things saying, oh, I'm not going to talk about this, I'm going to talk about that. Why are they so sort of uh, worried about what their employees are going to say? Why do you think they're worried? They put me on the spot, really, I don't know. I think, generally speaking, um, if you talk to the press mm. and say something flippant without thinking, you might... Uh land yeah. the airline in Heaven some forbid. sort of libel. Just take a deep breath. You know what you say to the passengers on the, on the plane when they're getting a little bit nervous? Just to, just say, I, I can see you're a little nervous now. Just want you to I'm breathe deeply. I, I will bring the sick bag around a little later on if you don't sort of, okay? What was the worst thing that a passenger can do to you? I mean, are they all nicely behaved like I would imagine that? Uh... Most are, to be honest. Yeah. We have things happen, for example, um, a friend of mine was on a a short European sector where you're in the air for only 20 minutes mm. and a lady wanted a third cup of coffee. They'd already served drinks, a meal, tea and coffee. Third cup of coffee? She wanted a third cup of coffee, so Green. my yeah. friend explained mm. that they'd thrown the coffee away on because they were landing. Mm. And so the lady threw her cup at the stewardess. On the plane? On the plane. Up in the sky? Up in the sky. I mean, you imagine if Jim Bowen had been on board, he would have freaked completely, started this sort of... Uh, <laughs> Well, the woman herself might have been nervous, you see. Yeah. Very often when people behave badly, we know that they are nervous. Now, do, I mean, <sighs> do passengers get up to, I mean, uh, I've heard stories about the Mile High Club and things like that. I mean, does that, does that happen? Is that just for the, the, the cabin staff or can the passengers <laughs> join in if they want? <laughs> no comment. Oh, come on, for goodness really sake, Joan, I haven't got you all the way up here to make no comment. <laughs> Tell me. I'm sorry, James. No. I, I have no first-hand stories of that. Yes, no, I'm sure that you wouldn't. I'm, I'm absolutely I positive, think yes. But... It's probably happened yeah. amongst yeah. passengers and maybe crew, but passengers have more time than crew. Yeah, forget the crew, but I mean the passengers. Possibly so they get happened. into the loo together and I, I mean it's a bit of a tight squeeze. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, they have, haven't they? What do you do in that sort of situation? I haven't been in the situation myself. No. 
But there's little, you know, you talk about it, but when you get back to base, what happens? Not a lot one can do. Okay. Except hammer on the door and hammer ask on the if door and get okay. them out. <laughs> Let's take a few calls. I was going to have a few calls. I can't find. Uh, we had a, a list. Where's it? Where's... Ah, right. Lovely. Thank you very much indeed. That's very good. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Whale Airlines, by the way, Richard Branson, you want to watch out because um, all I'm short of at the moment is an aeroplane. But once I get an aeroplane, would you come and work and train my uh, my my my? I'd be delighted. Is? I need Fantastic. a job. Grant from South End. Hello, Grant. Oh, hello, James. Yes, Grant, uh, I've your got question. a question for you. Yep. Uh, I'd, I'd just like to know basically why all the uh, stewardesses seem to be so pretty. Do the airlines have a policy of promoting uh, only this sort of employment? Well, I, would you want to be stuck up there? With, uh, no. Um, <clears throat> are, do, you, do you think that uh, a, a girl who, or a woman who, who isn't uh, attractive or well-groomed, well, they're not always pretty, they're all sorts no. of girls who, uh, who become... That's right. They're not always pretty. Well-groomed, clean... Devoid of spots and nasties, yes. but really not pretty. I mean, you must presumably there must be a weight sort of. Uh... Yes, there's a weight to height relationship. Is there? But pretty is not um, one of the criteria. Because some of the American airlines, their, their stewardesses or flight attendants seem to be older than other airlines. Have you noticed that? Mm. Have you noticed that? Mm. Yeah. Well, in Britain now, stewardesses can be mm. 55 okay. and maybe going up. Let's talk to Graham from Stoke. Hi, Graham. Hello? Yes, your point, Graham. Yeah, well, uh, what it is, uh, I was disabled in uh, a motor motorbike accident. What happened? I went on, uh, like, I go to Spain, t you know, two times a year, like. Yeah. Uh, English side, so, you know, all right going on. Like, you know what I mean? Like, straight through the terminal and what uh -huh. have you. But when you're coming back from your day, like, the Spanish, they don't realise, it's like, you're trying to say you can't walk. And they're just lumbering up these stairs. So they they don't have wheelchairs or stuff like that. No, they, no? they just you know pull you yeah. up the stairs and you know, that's it. And I was trying to. Well, I think you should year. write to Spanish Airways. Who's that? Iberia. I suppose so. Yeah, give them a bollocking. That's what I do if I were you. Right. Thank you very much indeed. Now, for the moment, uh, you know we have the call box. I told you the number. Oh uh, eight nine eight forty six one thousand. These were some of the calls we got last week. No, that wasn't right, was it? I missed the point there. Wouldn't I have I? time to write a letter, but nonetheless wish to pass on to that charming Mr. Whale your views on his programme, or perhaps to suggest a subject which you would have him deal with, then Whaley's call box is for you. Ring 0898 46 1000 and speak after the tone. Now, that was completely wrong. I messed that up, actually. Um, completely, uh, completely wrong. You said... <laughs> I do. I, 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 you're going to sit over there, are you? I thought that was my chair. No, 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 you sit over there because you do. No, no, please, no. No, you'll be comfortable there. No, no, it's fine, no, it's fine, that's lovely. That's lovely. I got, uh, where are we? I got that bit wrong, actually. We'll be doing that bit a little later on. But that was, that was a nice a number. A caption, Jim. The a number, caption. 0853. 0532 and 0 is on the caption and 0898 is on the voiceover. Is it? Yeah, different. Oh. Name. Oh, you got it wrong as well. Oh, so well, we both got that bit wrong and we'll carry on. Thank you very much, Jim. <coughs> What's the biggest cock-up that you've ever made on Bullseye, seeing that you just highlighted that one for me? When I asked somebody <laughs> what they did for a living... Not that you ever do, no, I no. said to them, what do you do for a living? He said, I've been unemployed nine months. I said, smashing. <laughs> <laughs> and then what did you do? He called me a cunt, pun. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Sean, going very swiftly on... Yeah, no, we weren't on, were we then? <laughs> We weren't on air then, were we? No, no, we're off the air. We're in a commercial break at the moment. We're waiting for... Uh, for, for, for uh, Jim! Sorry, I mean, For goodness sake, there'll be people out there who could get quite upset about it. You're feeling more relaxed now, aren't you? Tiny bit. She yeah. did very well there, actually. You she imagine how, how, how worried she is? I mean, you know, yeah, you're worried about... I find that incredible that you... Yeah. It's not just to say the you, tables turn, are they? It is a little yeah. bit, yeah. Just, but you were no trace of any nerves at all. No, you look delightful. We're staying at the Holiday Inn and... Um, <laughs> Available for children's parties and... <laughs> can I, uh, uh, listen, can I, can I change the subject just for a couple of moments? Is that okay? Okay, you, 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 okay. Uh, we, we've, uh, we've got something here I'd like to, uh, I'd like to show you, actually. Uh, these, because, of course, it was, uh, it was AIDS week last week. These are something coming up to Christmas. We like to introduce you to things that you may not have thought. These are probably the, the present for the man and woman who have everything. These are diamonds, <laughs> are a boy's... <laughs> or a girl's best friend. These are diamond-studded condoms. Now, whilst I'm showing these, <laughs> these to you, wow. I, I want to make a little appeal. I want, uh, I want actually to know why it is that whoever is in charge 
so far has decided not to allow the advertising of condoms, not only on late night television, but on television any time, as far as I'm concerned, after six o'clock in the evening, when everybody knows the problems of AIDS and everything else, why is it that whoever makes these decisions will not allow condoms to be advertised on television? I want you here to tell me. These are the condoms. We'll get a, a shot of this. It comes in a very nice, a very nice presentation case. Okay, and inside you do get a piece of paper saying that, let, let me show this to you, I have to be very careful, saying that this is a real diamond. Now it is a real, can I, I can't demonstrate. Uh, where is it, Joe? <laughs> knowing, the way, knowing the way Jim's mind is working at the moment, I won't ask him to, uh, to help me out on this. Um, there, can, can you see right at the end, can we, <laughs> Leslie, can you, who's, oh, camera one over here, can we, can we get, sorry, there. <laughs> now can you see that at the end there? Looks a bit like what Sean Slug. Oh, it does, doesn't it? You should have had Matthew Corbett to demonstrate. When you, <laughs> when you well, buy one of these, <laughs> you get a guarantee. This certificate here is a guarantee that that is a real diamond. It's not much of one. And, uh, and there we are. These are not for use, by the way. Not for use at all. Now. One other thing before we carry on with flying. You're okay here, aren't you, for the moment? Um, earlier this week, you may have read in the national press that uh, Richard Madeley and Shaking Stevens have had a little bit of a fallout. Well, they, they had a little bit of a fallout ten years ago. And in a tribute to Richard, um, we'd like to show you the reason why. Look at this. It's from an album called Marie Marie. <laughs> Now, Shake, one of men and women who will be most upset at the way you treated poor Richard like that. I know that was ten years ago. There was no excuse for that, Shaky. And Richard, I think after ten years, you and Shaky have, have got to build bridges. You've got to, you've got to make it up. Now, you, honestly, and I, I am, I'm giving you the, the forum here next week, if you would like to come onto the program next week and publicly make it up with each other, we here on The Whale Show would be prepared to allow you to do that, and you'd like to see that, wouldn't you? Yes. yes. We don't want to see this nastiness in show business at all, and it has made us very sad here tonight to witness that, and we want to make it better for you. We'll take a break. Okay, Wales Mail is on the air. Don't forget, if you want to write to the programme, you don't want to use the phone, you can always do that. The address will be coming up as I read a selection. There it is, Wales Mail, Yorkshire Television leads a selection of some of the letters we got last week. Thank you for them. Now, Duncan from Glasgow, who had terrible teeth but now has had them fixed, said the pain was next to nothing compared with the pain of walking about with broken teeth and bad breath. Yeah, we noticed that last week, actually. Uh, Julie Hunter in Leicester said, mockingly, women don't worry about dentists or having babies. It's only men that have a problem with pain. It's a little sexist there, Julie. I don't think that's very nice. And quite a few callers complained of bad experiences due to the attitude of dentists. Dentists, take note. And even more said, it's not the pain at the dentists, it's the pain of parting with so much money for the privilege. And Sean Wetton in Chorley in Lancashire thinks it would be great to see a show on anoraks. You know, the sort of radio and television fanatics and, and people who are uh, sort of uh, into all sorts of... We thought anoraks is a great idea. We're going to do that. Anoraks, if you have any more ideas, get in touch. And a serious... This was right, quite worrying. A serious but anonymous letter found its way to the office. It read, I taped one of your shows where you were talking about somebody playing with a dolphin's pee. Peanut. Peanut what? Oh, peanut. Oh, sorry, peanut, yeah. Uh, you said it was big and we're laughing as if it were a joke. Well, I wasn't laughing as if it was a joke. I was laughing because I was upset and jealous. Uh, you'll not get away with this. I'm sending the tape to Prince Charles and see if he will have you taken off the air. That's very nice. But to keep the letters coming in, thank you very much indeed. Now, on a different note. Um... Ladies and gentlemen, this is your chief steward speaking. <sighs> Owing to heavy weather and strong winds at high altitudes, the captain has descended to a more comfortable cruising height. Oh, <clears throat> this means that this flight will now become the Intercity 125, calling at Doncaster, Redford, Peterborough, Stevenage, and London, King's Cross. 
Right, a different topic. This is uh, this is a nice letter we got in. It uh, comes from somebody said a few weeks ago. Uh, this is Dean from Norfolk. Actually, he said you had a program on testicular cancer. Well, I feared that I had testicular cancer after noticing a lump over a year ago. Recently, I had it checked and it was found to be a harmless cyst. My delay in seeing the doctor was fear and embarrassment. But the fear played on my mind so much that I nearly got kicked out of university and it was ruining my life. Please tell viewers who may be silently suffering to take what steps they need to go to the doctors and urge them to tell somebody else, anyone, and they can get help. That's a, that's a good point. Thank you very much indeed for that. Um, which brings us on, I think, now to uh, the competition. All right, so, okay, competition, everything running quite smoothly at the moment. Competition. Remember last week, we said, would you like to win this? Snooput, the latest game. There we are. It's a cross between Snooky, very nicely modelled by our um, <laughs> by our hostess. Um, it's a cross between golf and snooker. And Mr. K. Trimble from Deal in Kent is the winner. And uh, he quite rightly said that the highest break you can get in snooker is 155. Now we had thousands and thousands of entries, most of which said 147. Is it? Yes, but that isn't the maximum break you can get in snooker, and I will tell you why. Because uh, if there's a foul by the player who breaks off this, breaks off, that's a, apparently a technical term, isn't it? I, I don't understand anything about this. Uh, this effectively gives his opponent two extra shots, and if his opponent pots a red and a black, those eight points could make a potential highest break of 155. And according to the uh, governing bodies of snooker, it's never been done. This week's competition is great. To keep in the spirit of flying, we are offering you a once-in-a-lifetime chance to own your own Concorde. To enter the competition, the number coming up on your screen, all right? There we are, 0898 500 treble 1. The question is, which country, apart from Britain, is still flying Concorde? And you could win this. I thought that was quite good, really. Fantastic, OK. And we might throw in maybe the uh, condoms with the diamond studs as well, if you're very lucky. Now, this is what I meant to introduce earlier. Some of your calls we got on the call box last week were fascinating. Just listen to a little selection and watch the sheep. Yes, that's open during the week, 0898 46 1000, and uh, I'd like to know the name and address and telephone number of the lady who wanted to, well, anyway, a little... Uh, uh, for the competition this week, we'll throw this in as well. You saw edited highlights there of the sheep jumping over the fence for those of you who have trouble getting to sleep. Very good indeed. Now, a little music live on the show tonight, and this is going to be great. These are a band that come from the West Country. They haven't been seen on television before. They don't, as uh, far as I know at the moment, have uh, a contract with a record uh, label either. So who knows, after being seen on the TV tonight, maybe they will. Right, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Biarritz and Need a Little Love. <laughs> Good, 
I like that. It's good. good. I also like the way the cameras move back there. You were impressed with that, Jim. I that could was tell. The speed at which these guys move them was they? incredible. Yep, yep, yep. Now, uh, here we are, final part of the program. We're going to take some phone calls and we get some in. And uh, everybody's okay. You're all right now. I know you're a little nervous before. I'm fine You've now. You've got yourself under control, have yes, you? Yes, I'm Fantastic. used to it all now. Okay. And uh, you're available for Bernard's Club, as uh, you said earlier, of course. Yes. Uh, you, you know, if he wants you to appear there. Yep. Yes, I'd like to appear at Bernard's Club. Yes. Yeah, Bernard is on next week, actually. Was we'll he with you? Yes, yes. Did you watch him on This Is Your Life? Yes, I saw you. I have to ask you about that. Why were you almost off the chair? You were yes, nearly in fits funny. of... You were in hysterics. Why? His, his Sergeant Major came on and, and uh, from his National Service days. Yeah. And he, he sounded just like Bernard. And he spoke, for those of you who didn't see the programme, he spoke for two minutes and none of us could tell a word he said. <laughs> he said, you come around the mansion, 1951, and that national service struck me with a bayonet, struck the towel, and the blood was coming down here, and then all the anybody saying, is this man Polish? <laughs> it was incredible. Very funny man. Yeah. And, so, Ber and Bernard said, can you be quick? I'm going on holiday in June. <laughs> that was the line. It was very funny. So they must have edited some of that out because it well, wasn't... The little bits yeah. they've got to edit out. Yeah. That's the nice thing about this programme. Of course, you can't edit no. anything out. Little slips, you know, words that slip out when you don't mean them. Slip out. No, you can't. Yes, absolutely. No, nothing of that. Yes, that's right. Uh, right, Jonathan from Felixstowe. Jonathan, you're yo. on the air. Yes, yo. Hello, James. How Hi. are you? Fine, Jonathan. Good, good. I've got a question about... Um, sort of flying in general and everything. Yeah. And as a child, I used to fly a lot unaccompanied um, on a sort of airways company. Um, am I allowed to mention the name at all? No. Oh, all right then. And uh, <laughs> I'd like to ask the stewardess about the myth of uh, most uh, air hostesses being airheads. And really, that's the place for them, up in the sky. Thank you, yes, I get the idea. Uh, Jonathan, <laughs> perhaps next time you could just a little quicker. Are stewardesses airheads, are they uh, not very bright? If they were bright, would they not be serving meals to people sort of five miles high? I think most stewardesses are bright. I don't know where he's got his ideas from. He's a pillock, that's where he got them from. He's an absolute pillock. If he's pillock. <laughs> he's a pillock. Look into the camera and tell him what a pillock, you know, for all the good... Which tell camera? Him. That one over there with the red light on, yeah. Tell him. He's Say certainly mis yeah. mistaken. He might have met one or two. Yeah. OK, fine, good. Uh, Michelle from Hull. Hello. Hello. James. I've got a wonderful story for Jim because I actually survived a plane crash. Oh, and thank goodness. I know, no, after no, all, no, right. no, no, right. Michelle, because don't do I this. I got thing. on this plane yeah. and I went to sit in the middle and I sat down. You went to sit in the middle. I was sitting in the middle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I looked out of the window and the window was all dirty so I couldn't see. So I thought, oh, I'll move to the back of the plane so that I get a good view when I'm landing. And the plane crashed, and unfortunately, the people in the middle died. What? And so... What? Yeah, they died. And the moral of this story is, like, if you're going to die, you're going to die. So planes or not... Thanks for that. Has that cheered you up? No. <laughs> Michelle? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I feel a lot better. Are you on something, or...? <laughs> no, I'm... No, 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 no. I never heard such rubbish in my life, was you? Well, uh, well that... Yeah. Was she from... Maybe it was a ghost, I don't know. Robin from Hull. Another one from Hull. Robin. Oh, uh, good morning, James. Yes, good morning, Robin. Oh, uh, my opinion about flying, I'm a private pilot, or was, and uh, I think flying is the next best thing to sex. Probably, in your case, the only, uh, <laughs> the only thing. <laughs> um, Robin, thank you. Caroline from Scotland. Hello, Caroline. Hey, gentlemen, Hi, this is your cabin steward speaking. <laughs> Just a, As you may have noticed, the captain has turned on the nose-making and seatbelt lights <laughs> prior to our descent into London's Heathrow Airport. This will come as a bit of a shock as we were aiming for Malaga. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing if not the most advanced technical equipment on this programme, as you can see, as you can see. OK. Uh, sorry, Caroline. Hi. Hi, from Scotland. Yeah. A member of the Mile High Club. Of course. Yes, tell us about it. How did you do it and what was it like? <laughs> it was very good, actually. Very, very uncomfortable, but it got it at the end. Were you an employee or were you a passenger? No, I was on a, a sort of trip to London. Yes. A um, domestic flight. A domestic flight, yes. Domestic flight. Yeah. Could you British get... Midland Airways. <laughs> and was it the best you'd ever had or not? Or did... It gives you a bit of a sexual feel doing it in the place. Fantastic. If you could call 0898 46 1000, leave me the whole story so we could listen to it later, I'd be very grateful. Thank you very much indeed to everybody. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the audience tonight. And next week, the last... No, no, no. Next week, the last show before Christmas, we have on the show... Look at this for a bill. We have the Dream Girls. We have the Men from Adonis. We have Madge from Neighbours. 
we have the most requested man on this programme, Big Bernard Manning. Oh, yes, well, and yeah. we have... And we have from Ireland the Saw Doctor, so make a date, join us on the James Whale Radio Show ITV next Friday night. Very In the meantime, thank you very much indeed to my guests here, to the audience who will be very good tonight. Have a nice weekend, bye-bye. <laughs>